Hey everyone, welcome to the eighth episode of Crafting for Noobs. This very may well be the final episode for a while as I feel we've covered most of the crafting basics you'll need to understand to get going yourself. That being said, don't worry, now we're going to have some fun. Now we can go through some crafts together and if you've watched every episode before this one, you should understand what's happening. But I'm sure you also want to start crafting yourself. But what if you don't have any currency? Not to fear, you can practice, experiment safely without spending a single cent. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Craft of Exile. Craft of Exile is a free online tool that allows you to calculate, simulate and emulate crafting processes. This allows us to determine which crafting method is the best and most cost effective way to create the items we want before we even do anything real in game. So let's have a look. At the top, there are a few buttons. Firstly, have a look at basic and advanced. Basic has got some basic information on crafting, stuff we've gone over in the series, things like crafting currency, common crafting methods. If you need a refresher on the last few videos, you can read through all of this. There's also an advanced section where you can read through things like gilded fossils helping to keep the original implicit on Varling, it's all very specific, but it's well worth the read. But let's start with the crafting calculator. The crafting calculator allows us to choose our modifiers and determine the most cost effective way of creating an item. At the top, we can import a base. All you need to do is press Ctrl C on an item in game and then Ctrl V to paste it in here. It'll drop the base in here and you can start with that. However, Let's start with an item from scratch. Let's use an example by seeing the easiest way to create an explodey chest. So we can type in a base like astral plate and then click it here. And then we can select the item level and under advanced options, you'll see the base group, whether it's a helmet, weapon or ring, whatever you like. You'll see base group, body armors, base, body armor strength, item, astral plate, and influence. So for the explodey chest, we know we need crusader influence. So we click that little plus button and then hit crusader. Now we have our base, a high item level astral plate with the crusader influence. So below that, you'll see that we've got choose a crafting method with everything from fossils to essences to chaos spam, orbs of alteration, these fancy exalted orbs, annulments, and meta crafting. But below that, you'll see that we have our mod pool. After selecting our base, this is where we're going to begin. This shows us the tiers, item level requirements, weight, as well as whether the mod is a prefix or a suffix. However, we can just go to the top and search for an affix. So I'm going to type in explode here, click X explode, it pops up here. Prefixes, enemies you kill explode, dealing percent of their life as physical damage. And if we click it, it'll shoot us down to where it is listed in the mod pool. We can add more modifiers by just clicking on this. If we click on something with multiple tiers, it'll open it up, it'll expand it, and we can click like 129 life. That'll take it into account when we do calculations. But for now, we're just going to be looking at this one modifier, looking at different methods we can use to acquire it. So let's look at our various crafting method. Let's look at fossils. So in the last video, I spoke about fossil combinations and how do you know which combination is best to get a specific modifier? Well, what's wonderful about Craft of Exile is that we have this button, Compute Best Selection and we can select the max resonator size. So if we click this button, it runs a little simulation of 561 different fossils, and then it immediately pops up this at the top of our page. So what you'll see on the left is raw efficiency. What this is, is the method that will gain us this modifier most often but it does not take price into account. So if you want to hit 
the Explode mod in just 10 tries on average, you can use Corroded, Dense, Jagged, Pristine. But if you look on the right, you'll see that there is also a cost efficiency method. This will show us the price and method used to get the modifier we want in the cheapest amount as possible. So at the top, we can see if we just use a Jagged Fossil, we will get the modifier we want most cheaply. Even though this method, Corroded, Dense, Jagged, Pristine, is more likely to get the modifier, if we go down, 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 you'll see it's actually one of the most expensive methods of doing it. So this is an absolutely wonderful way to find out not only which method is the best way to get a modifier, which you can see on the raw efficiency, but which way is the cheapest method to get a modifier. So while we're here, let's just write this number down. We know that if we use Jagged on an item, we will spend 368 Chaos on average to see the Explode mod. Let's compare that to some other methods of crafting. So if we want to change the method, we just click here on Fossils, clicky, and then it goes away. Now we can choose something different. Let's have a look at another method. What if we were to just use Orbs of Alteration to try and hit that Explode mod? Let's click that. Immediately, what pops up? This over here. So you can see that on average, it would take 1,722 Orbs of Alteration with a 63% confidence to hit the Explode mod. Now, this converted into Chaos is 622 Chaos Orbs. So we can compare this to the price of what it would cost with the Jagged Fossil method. The Jagged Fossil method was 368 and this is 622 Chaos. However, using Orbs of Alteration does have some upsides. Once we do hit the Explode mod, it'll be on an item with just one or two modifiers. We might even be able to completely isolate it. So we'd spend almost double, not quite double, but quite almost, <laughs> <laughs> We'd spend a lot more, but we would be left with an item that is much more pliable or malleable that we can work with more easily. Whereas if we use the Jagged method, we'd be left with a modifier with up to six modifiers and maybe five out of those six are ones that we don't want. So that's something to bear in mind. Let's see what it would cost to just chaos spam until we saw this mod. 752 Chaos Orbs. This, by far, just the flat out objectively worst way to hit this modifier. Not only does it cost more than fossils, it also will result in an item with possibly up to six modifiers. So this is just worse on all fronts. We do not want to use this method. So let's just pretend that we want to create some ridiculously powerful item and we're just going to add some life and we're going to add chaos resistance and some resistances. Let's just pretend we have this. So after clicking all of those modifiers and we go back up to the top, you can see the item requirements. This is what lets the Craft of Exile tool know which modifiers we want on our item when it's making its calculations. So now that we have our item in mind, we can click through these various things and see which would be best. Let's just do this test with the best selection and to hit this ridiculous item, it would cost us apparently 12, <laughs> 12 million tries. We could do it with Aberrant and Pristine. This is the most cost efficient coming in at a low, low 1.9 million chaos, whereas we could do this grouping and it would only take 42,000 tries but it would cost us about seven, 7 million chaos. Something I just want to add before we move over to the emulator, these P1, so these are groups, right? So over here, you can see this physical damage is in group one. Now, someone asked, they said, I want to get physical damage and also a, let's say level one fortify. And they said, it should only take 117 tries. Why is it taking so many attempts? Well, first of all, these are both prefixes. And as you should know by now, 
a magic item can only have one prefix and one suffix. So why is it saying that it's only going to take 117 tries? Also, if we, let's say, remove the physical damage, now it's 139. Why did it go up? Why does it go down when we add another modifier? The reason for this is because of these groups. So over here, what this is saying, these are in group one. It's saying, what are the chances when using alt augment to roll this mod or this mod, not both this one or this one. So if we are doing, let's say with chaos orbs, we can add that same modifier and you'll see now it is in group two saying we want this one and this one. However, if we put it over here, it's now saying this one or this one. When it goes into group two, this one and this one, and you can see the tries goes up. So pay attention to this. And also always remember to check if things are prefixes or suffixes, because this can be very confusing if you say alteration and try search for two prefixes. It's gonna it's gonna be very confusing. So pay attention to that. So another thing I should mention is that this method does not include harvest crafting and other certain tricks, but there is a way to do that, and we will get onto that next. But first, let's have a look at the simulator. This simulator essentially spams the item with the selected crafting method from the calculator page. So let's just do fossils jagged because we know that's the most cost efficient method. We're going to do that and then we can hop over to the simulator. And this will just run a simulation. We click it and this is essentially just spamming jagged fossils on the item. So to the left, you can see here number rolled. This is how many jagged fossils we've spammed on the item. Then how many times the item rolled with four, five or six modifiers. Don't worry about this for now, but you can see over here success. This is how many times we have hit our explode mod and you can see it go up and up and up and up and up based on how many times we've rolled the item. This is just going to keep going until it hits 100,000. The more times it does this simulation, the more accurate this ratio is going to be. So I think we've done about 6,000. This number is still kind of fluctuating, but it's sort of hovering around one in 90. So we can stop that and compare it to what the calculator tells us. So the calculator says it's about one in 120 to get it with a 63% confidence, but the simulator tells us it's a bit lower. I suspect that we might have just got a bit lucky, but if we let this roll, what I predict is that this number is going to go closer to the number that is shown with the calculator. You can already see it going up a bit more, but yeah, this is just a closer way of seeing exactly what the ratio is. But the absolute best thing about Craft of Exile is the crafting emulator. They recently added this to the game and not even exaggerating, this is one of the best things that's ever happened to Path of Exile. So what you can do with this is craft to your heart's content, pretending you are the richest person in the world with infinite currency and you can do whatever you want. Let's go over how the crafting emulator works. Firstly, you can create a new item. So let's just create a body armor. You can choose the type, strength, int, decks and all the hybrids. So let's choose an astral plate because that's a very popular type. Now you can choose the influences and then you can select the item level and then the item quality. So let's pretend we have a crusader astral plate. Now what pops up is all of the different crafting options you have at the top. So we've got transmute, alt, Org, Regal, Alchemy, and then you see we can Chaos Spam and slam it with Exalt, Scour. I know you've been thinking, shut up, just say it, Harvest Crafting. This is the coolest thing about this. I will show you how we're going to use this. But yeah, this is just a game changer for learning your Harvest Crafting. We've also got Essences, Catalyst, Beasts, and if you want to just double corrupt some stuff, you can do that as well. So let's just go over the mechanics. 
If you want to do harvest crafting, you'll first need the item to be rare. So you just click the little alchemy orb and then you can do this. You can make it rare. Now it'll roll with a bunch of modifiers. And over here, you can see we've got our mod pool. These are the potential mods that can roll on the item. And you've got your bench. These are all the things you can craft on with the crafting bench. Then underneath that, you'll see there are prefixes and suffixes. So if you're not seeing the mod you're looking for, just look here. It might be a prefix. If you can't find resistance, you're probably stuck on prefixes. But let's go to our prefixes. So now you can see these are all the modifiers that have rolled on the item. We've got our life, we've got reflect, we've got armor and strength. Now we can click this here. Just click that. It'll open it up and it'll show you the tier we've rolled, the item level requirement and the weight. If we don't want this on the item, we can just click this little X or we can click these arrows to change the tier. But let's get rid of that for now. So we just click that little X. So we can do the same for life. We can go here and say, no, we actually got tier one life. So we click these little arrows. There we go. Now, if you don't want to have to click through all of these right away and manually go through them and click X, 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 X. Well, let's pretend that we got an item with six modifiers and we don't have to go through and click all of them. You can just annul. So just annul. Everything is gone. So now that you know how to do that, I just want to show you the history on the left. It's got an undo button. So you just click that. It will undo all those annuls. Then over here, it's got the spending report, how much we've spent and export. I assume this means that you can export it and then put it into path of building. I haven't used that function personally, but just so that you're aware of it. Of course, if you make some fatal error or you want to start a new craft, you can hit restart and then go back to the beginning, create a new item. Easy, easy like that. All right, proceed. So let's just look at some. I feel harvest crafting would be a good way to do this. So we're going to click here and then we can click harvest crafting and it comes up with all the different harvest crafting options. Now, if you watched episode six of Crafting for Noobs, you would see that I used some of this in that video. But here we've got Augment, Replace. This is, say, remove a random cold modifier from an item, add a cold modifier. Non-type to type, remove a non-cold modifier, add a cold modifier. Then you can do targeted annuls, like remove a cold modifier. And then targeted divines. I mean, don't worry about that. Don't worry about these as much. I don't really ever use this. It's just like fancy chaos spams. Then over here, you've got your resist. So you can swap fire to cold, fire to lightning and other. We've got things like reroll the suffixes while keeping the prefixes. Again, not as useful, but the main ones augment, replace, non type to type and annul are amazing. You can do a lot of practicing and spend time familiarizing yourself with this system. Now, instead of going through a craft with you right here and right now, I'm going to release a video beside this one. So when you're watching this, there's going to be another video that I uploaded at the exact same time where we are going to craft a pretty juicy armor. And in that process, you'll start seeing how I use all of these tools in conjunction to create an item. So be sure to check that out. That's going to be our first craft. And also, if you join our Discord and you have a crafting problem and you're not sure how to tackle it, come ask me because what I'd like to do is start a series where we have viewers who ask questions. They say, I don't know how to make this. How do we make this in the most efficient way possible? We hop on a call together and I talk you through it. So if you want to do that, join our Discord and let's chat. Anyway, I believe that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to go immediately right now. Check out the other video. I'll link it in the description below. Check it out and see how we can make a mirror tier chest for 12x. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Join our Discord. Like and subscribe if you like the video. Follow me on Twitch, etc. And yeah, take care. Bye bye. Ching
exile. You're making me nervous. 